there. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal Crawford. <laughs> In case you forgot, hi, welcome to my living room. Um, I'm going to try to give you some different angles in my house because that's usually where I am when I'm recording the show and you know that way I get to see little bits more of what I'm adding to my life and as I get rugs and furniture. Hi Kim! <laughs> hey Katerina! Um, you know, just kind of show you what I'm creating around here. Uh, but I called this week's episode, Are You Repeating the Same Thing Over and Over and Over and Over and Over Again? Um, this was, hi Barbara, this was inspired by a friend of mine, but also by my own life where I have been dynamically looking at things that I just keep doing. I just keep doing them. I, I, I keep doing them because I keep doing them because I keep doing them. Hi Christina. <laughs> so I had you guys send in your questions and um, we're of course, like we do every week, going to riff in and around. Hi Dorotea, going to riff in and around the topic. And um, there is a question that I want to give to you around this topic of repeating things that, um, hold on, I have to find it. You'd think I'd have this ready because I know that I'm going to be on, hold on, just hold, hold please. Don't go anywhere. Hi. Hi Maxie. Okay. So here's this question that we're playing with today. Okay. What awareness am I avoiding with this repeated experience? What, what awareness am I avoiding with this repeated experience? Okay, so in my own life, this is showing up in a few different areas right now. Hi, Andrea. One of the things that I've been looking at changing is past, paying down past expenditures. And um, this is, having debt or past expenditures has been a reality in my life for a while. You know, for all, I don't even know, for the last five, six years for sure before that, then I paid some of them off and then I got back in debt. And um, so one of the things that I've been looking at with repeated experiences is like, hey, Erica, I keep choosing to be in debt. I keep choosing to not pay it off. I keep choosing to create just enough for doing all the things, but not actually doing anything with that. So I've been looking at areas of my life where, um, hey, Tamara, where I'm just doing the same thing because I'm doing the same thing. Um, another one of the areas of my life where I've been looking at what I've been doing that's very similar is the area of relationship. And I have pretty much been in some kind of long-term relationship since I was 18, 20. And this is the first time in my life where I am playing with choosing and choosing and then not choosing and then playing with choosing, actually just being single, just as a different thing, as a different choice. And so I've been listening to, Gary Douglas does these seven day classes and I was at one last year in Malaysia and I've been re-listening to the recordings of that seven day class and the whole seven day class was about predictable versus not predictable, predictable versus not predictable. And I can't even cognitize that conversation enough to actually repeat it for you. But what I've, what I've been looking at is that anywhere that I am not changing something or I'm repeating the same behavior over and over and over is this place where I'm looking for and searching for and recreating something that's predictable. I was looking at like uh, my choices with relationships is like, I know this game. Even when it's with a different person, I know the game, right? Like I know how we do it and blah, 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 and this is how it goes and it's very predictable and you get to know each other and playing thing and thing. And today I woke up especially and I was like, oh, this is just boring. Like this is, you know, and I get to those places sometimes where I'm like, I'm just bored with what I'm doing with things, you know? And Gary does say like, you're not, you're not gonna change anything till you're bored. That's how humanoid reality is. And if you don't know what a humanoid is, private message me, I'll tell you. But humanoid reality is this like, you, you don't change things till you're bored. And today I woke up and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm just bored with everything. I'm bored with how this is all showing up. I'm bored with being predictable. I'm bored. And so that's usually for me when things start generating and changing. So that is another, hello, Miss Marianella. Hi, Carol. Car Carol. <laughs> that was my terrible French accent. Um, you won't change things till you're bored with them. Just know that about yourself. So all the tools that I'm going to give you are to instigate boredom in your world because once you're bored, you'll change it. Hi, Lizbeth. I was just looking at your stuff on Facebook. So good to see you. Um, okay, so let's talk about what are some of the areas for you guys that you keep repeating the same thing over and over and over. Feel free to throw them in there. Give me a little bit of information, not a, not a paragraph, but I need a little bit of information, not just one word if you want me to talk about it. Hi, Miss Sandra. Um, 
And let's start here, because Samantha sent, oh wait, she just, no, nope, that's not enough information. Okay, so Miss Aurelia has um, a, a bunch of things repeating, and maybe you guys are in the same boat. Um, I've got very little money coming in, issues with relationships, and issues with my mom, need I go on? Okay, so she's got lots of stuff going on. So honestly, with some of this stuff, I'm just gonna give you the clearing of like, okay, so what aware, hi Cynthia, what awareness am I avoiding with this repeated experience? What awareness am I avoiding with this repeated experience? What awareness am I avoiding with this repeated experience? Hi, right round good bed, pod, pod, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Hi, Roxana. And if you're new to the clearing statement, go to theclearingstatement.com and you'll find out a whole bunch of info on that thing. Self-judgment is a repeated experience. Oh my God, seriously. So what awareness do you avoid with judging yourself? One of the, my favorite tools in all of access consciousness is the How to Become Money Workbook. It should be called how to become all that you are, how to have the life you've always dreamed of, how to um, failure working on teams in any setting. Okay, great. It, it, it shouldn't be called just how to become money. It's just, it's called how to become money because that's the thing we all think we want. And so, but that whole workbook actually takes us into like what's actually true about us. The reality of us is the thing about the workbook. What's the reality of you? that you are money, you are power, you are creativity, you are awareness, you are control, you are all these things. That's the reality and the truth of you. And what we keep trying to create from are, this, are the lies about us. Every single fucking thing that you judge about yourself is a lie. Every single thing. It doesn't even matter if it seems true. It doesn't even matter if it seems valid and validated by circumstances. All of the judgments about you are just, they're just not true. They're lies. That's it. So you can't create a greatness from a lie. It's like trying to build a house on the sand. It just actually doesn't work. You just can't do it. You need bedrock or some sort of platform upon which to build a house so that it stays up, you know? Um, so what awareness are you avoiding with repeating judging yourself? And you know, the only, I keep kind of getting this in different ways. The only time we can have a problem with anything, uh, the only time you can even have a problem is if you're unwilling to be something, unwilling to know something, unwilling to perceive something, and unwilling to receive something. And that is something that I just keep looking at. Even so, even like changing, getting out of my past, getting out of debt, right? Getting out of my past expenditures, paying those off. What am I unwilling to be that would change that? What am I unwilling to know that would change that? What am I unwilling to choose that would change that? What am I unwilling to perceive that would change that? What am I unwilling to um, be, know, perceive, and receive? What am I unwilling to receive that would change that? And those questions each bring up a really, like, a set of energies, right? And when you're willing to really ask those questions, and what I mean by really ask is when you actually are curious, what will happen is it will bring up an energy. And you can pock and pod that energy if you want, or you can just go, yeah, what am I unwilling to be that would change my past expenditures with these? Am I unwilling to be as potent as I am? Am I unwilling to be as powerful as I am? Am I unwilling to outcreate it as fast as I actually can? Am I at, like, what am I unwilling to be? Um, am I, what am I unwilling to perceive? And it's really the same question of what awareness am I avoiding with continuing to not pay them off? What awareness am I avoiding? You know, what does staying in debt actually create for me. Um, I'm going to go into some of your other ones here. So I, so let's see here. You repeated experience of failure working on teams in any setting. So here's one of the other things that I look at when I'm unraveling something like this in my world, when something keeps repeating like that, one of the things that I ask myself, there's two things that I ask myself, which are pretty dynamic and bold questions. So I'd only use them if you got your big, big girl panties on. But one of them is like, well, what do I love about creating this? This, this a piece of information or awareness or whatever that we create everything in our lives has been one of the most empowering and wedging things for me to swallow or like actually just be an allowance of. Like I create everything in my life. But where, again, where it really started to hit home for me was when I started going through the How to Become Money Workbook. How to become money. How do you become money? You become money by being the all that you are instead of the all that you've thought you were or the all that you have decided you are. You become the all that you are instead of the all that you thought you were. And that you are the creator of everything that shows up in your life. 
And initially that was a bit of a bitch for me because I had judged myself for all the things that were showing up in my life. I judged myself for how my relationships were showing up and how my money was showing up and like all the things. I would judge myself for like not having this place fully furnished right now. And I, you just find things to judge yourself about. Um, but what I started to look at is like, okay, so I, I fail at working on teams every time. What is it that, what am I creating there? What is it that I love about that? What is it about that that actually works for me? Because I only fucking create things that I think are working for me. So do I actually want to be on those teams? Do I actually even like people? Am I proving a point of view somewhere? You know, I start kind of unraveling the unconsciousness around it. Because is it actually failure? Or do I have any interest in working on a team? You know, have I actually looked at this for me? Is this even a priority for me? Do I care? Do I think I should care? Do I have projections and expectations that I should care, right? Um, is this creating what I actually desire? And I start just getting more present with what it is. And that's what we talk about in foundation in the second class in access consciousness are the four questions to function from with anything, which is, what is this? What do I do with it? Can I change it? And if so, how, right? Well, what is it? Failing to work on teams. Okay, what is it? I don't work on teams well. I've decided that I fail at them. Well, I say that like it's a fact. Am I actually failing or is it something else? And what am I truly creating here that I'm not acknowledging? And so that whole series right there, that whole bit in the middle, you can extrapolate that to every single thing that you've got going on right now for you that isn't working very well. Um, okay, not earning profit too. Cool. So what does that mean, not earning profit? That's another great question to ask yourself. When I'm facilitating you, and here, you're like, we're working on becoming great facilitators of ourselves, right? So if you were sitting in front of me, I would go, well, what does earning profit mean to you? What does that mean to you? So this is what something you can ask yourself, well, what does this mean to me? What have I decided it means to me? What have I projected and expected it means of me? What am I actually doing? Is any of this actually true and real? Because the only things that stick us are lies that we've made true and real. Those are the things that stick us. The only things that stick to you are the lies that you made true and real. What's light for you is true for you and what's heavy is a lie. And so some of this stuff, you're gonna be looking through it and going, Oh, well, it's actually really light that I hate people, you know? <laughs> that, sh I thought that would be heavy because that's the judgment, right? No, that's just an awareness. And once you start to acknowledge some of this stuff, all the heaviness lifts off it, all the lie lifts off it, and you can just be you, and you can create whatever you want. Uh, Marianella insists on keeping, I insist on keeping me and my life small. Well, yeah, because how else could you have a predictable life? Anybody else keeping your life small so that you can have it be predictable? Everything that is, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, fuck, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Uh, unemployment, I have the awareness that I can't, can do. oh, I can't read the whole thing. Nope, can't, it's not gonna let me see more. Sorry, you can only do two lines. Sorry, Paige, I can't read your thing. Um, thank you, Cynthia. Uh, this Is this what I truly desire to create? Good one, getting lighter, cool. And you know, this is a little bit, I mean, like every week, this is a little bit all over the map and take out of this what you want. But Shona sent me a message too and she goes, sometimes um, my life seems like a stuck record. Hi, Berenice. Um, my body losing weight, finishing the house restoration, money, family. I lose weight, I gain weight. I love walking and ballet exercise, but I never seem to do it consistently. Um, keeping paperwork up to date for my business is a challenge, even though each month, I tell myself it will be different this month and the same um, with keeping track of my finances. Uh, gosh, putting it down like this, I feel like such a drama queen. Thanks for all your incredible posts and calls. Well, thank you, Shona. Um, does anybody else feel like that? Does anybody else actually feel like their life is a broken record? So then what, what's actually possible? I think that's actually the conversation I woke up with this morning of like, that ache of the dissatisfied dreamer with like, what's actually possible here? In this reality, in this reality, here's what, you, here's what you can count on. Thoughts, feelings, emotions, sex, no sex, which means basically who you can receive from and who you can't receive from. You can count on decisions and judgments and computations and conclusions. You can count on projections and expectations and separations and judgments and rejections and everything all of those create. That's this reality. Okay. Is that enough? And then what's beyond all of that? 
What is beyond all of that? What is the awareness that's possible beyond all of that? What are the choices that are possible beyond that? For what reason do we keep sitting in problems when we could be seeking possibilities? You know, that's one of the, I'm like, for what reason do I keep looking for limitations when I could actually be asking and seeking what I'd truly like to create as my life? You know, have I limited my life to just relationship? Have I been limited my life to just family, to just the things in this reality? Have I? Just relationship and family and money and and cars and my hardwood floors and my clothes and my makeup. Is that the is that the extent of my reality so far? And it's not that any of that shit's wrong, because I like I keep upgrading. I like upgraded life. I love beautiful life. Is that all? What reality beyond this reality am I capable of instituting and choosing and creating that I've not yet considered, I've not even asked for? What is beyond this reality? What is that for me? What is, what's a beyond this reality choice with my body here? You know, because we, like, we keep trying to do this predictable thing and it's fine, you can keep doing predictable, but not predictable may be more interesting. And that's what I've been really playing with of like, well, what's not predictable here? Well, I always do, I, like I always do this, I always do this kind of thing. Well, what don't I always do? Like if I know not this, then what could I choose, you know? I always do this thing every, okay, well if I didn't do that, if I had somebody else take care of it, or if I actually just, fuck it, I'm just, this, this month I'm gonna get fat, you know? Um, <laughs> really, like what if I played with something completely other to what I normally play with? And I opened up the episode talking about, you know, relationships and being single and like, that's what I'm playing with, right? I'm actually playing with choosing to be single, which is really different. And I notice in my world, there's all this unraveling of stuff. And that's, that may be what occurs for you as you're looking at like, what can I actually choose that's just beyond this, that has nothing to do with this? If my mother drives me crazy, what can I choose that's just different, you know? We always do this, we always have this conversation, we always get into this. Okay, we'll say something completely opposite. Just playing with choices that go outside of what you would normally choose because it's predictable. What are you actually capable of? Are you even interested in, in it? What can you actually create? And create is all the things. Choice creates. Choice creates. Creation isn't just one thing. Creation isn't programs or online things or bars class. And it's not any of that. Choice creates. The choice to send that message, the choice to have that conversation, the choice to be interesting point of view in a moment when you would normally go to judgment, the choice to ask, hey, would an infinite being truly choose this? The choice to just shift into a different energy when you're in a room. Like all of those are choices all of it and choice creates and then opens the door to more choices. Are you willing to be that powerful? Are you actually willing to be as powerful as you are? Are you willing to take up the challenge of who you truly are? What reality beyond this reality are you capable of choosing, asking for, instituting, beginning to, to see as an actualized thing on this planet? Listen, you guys, we, we are required right now. We are required. It, 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 we, if it's time, to, it's time, it's time. It's time to get out of our problems. It's time to actually pretend, stop pretending we even have problems. If you didn't have any problems, what would you choose, right? Like if, you, if none of this shit that you even messaged in with was a problem, what would you choose? What would you create? Are you spending most of your time trying to use the tools to fix your problems or what you've decided your problems are? You can do that. That's, that's the best thing about the access tools is they will change things for you from that perspective. But what is beyond that? What, what conversation would you really like to be having as your life? And see. So uh, if this get, just, yeah, so that. <laughs> Share it if you liked it. and. Um, I'm going to be starting a, a 71 week program with the advanced money workbook because there's 71 questions in that workbook. And, you know, for me, the creation of life is, an, it's, on, it's ongoing. It never ends. So 71 weeks is like, yeah, that's, I'm going to be alive for those weeks. So why would I not have a class? 
And I was really like, what can we actually begin to play with with this workbook and with these questions that generate something different for us? You know, so it's going to be called Monsters of Receiving. You'll see it out in the next few days and you're invited. And so are all your friends. It's $75 a month. Um, but that demand in my world of like, what's beyond this reality? What's beyond this reality with money? What's beyond this reality with and beyond relationships? What, what's beyond this reality with, with, fam with family? What's beyond this? And what am I capable of choosing and instituting and creating that I have not yet chosen? What are you capable of instituting, creating, and being that you have not yet chosen? Okay, that's it. I adore your faces, and I will see you when I see you. And if I don't see you anywhere else in class, I will see you online next week. And if you got anything out of this, I'd be really, really grateful if you'd share it with your friends. I'll see you later. Bye.